let's discover Valky, a free open source alternative to Redis. If you are familiar with Redis, this statement might be surprising you, as Redis has been open source until March 20, 2024, when they switched from BSD licensing to SSPL. As a response, a fork was created, with the intention of keeping it open source and continuing its development, focusing on enhancing clustering and performance. Let's discover what Valky is, how to install it, and how to use it. Valky is a high-performing key-value store server designed for speed and scalability. Its main use cases are caching to store frequently accessed data, for example, caching database or API responses. This is what we will learn to do later in this video. Session management to store user sessions and avoid requesting the database every time, while being able to update data through multiple connected clients. Real-time analytics, instead of writing about every event or request in the database, its high throughput capabilities allow you to batch write separately. Message queuing with PubSub mechanism for background job processing and real-time notifications. To start using Valky, you can install it by downloading the Docker release based on your server architecture on their download section. Or use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy the self-hosted version on the cloud provider of your choice while we take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To start using Valky on our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then deploy my first service, search for Valky and hit select. Choose between the different cloud providers, regions and service plan based on your need. Then next. Adjust the final settings, choose between the different level of support, I will keep the free included one and once you are ready hit the create service button. Once the installation is finished, you receive an email telling you that your Valky instance is ready. Follow the click here to get the password link. You arrive on Elestio admin dashboard where you can display your DB credentials with all the settings to connect to your instance. Automatically installed, you also have Redis Insight to view the data associated to your Valky instance. As Valky is a fork of Redis, Redis tools work out of the box with Valky. To try it, let's code a very simple Express Node.js backend. In an empty folder, let's create a new file named main.js. Let's copy code the starter code from Express, save it, then let's create an npm package, so npm init, let's name it Valky version 1, empty description, entry point main.js, ok, and we are good. Now we can run npm install Express, once done we can open our package JSON file, so we only have those files right now and we need a script to run our server. Let's name it dev, and what it will do is node main.js. It's a very simple example, so we just run it with node. Okay, let's try it. npm run dev, listening on port 3000, it's what the code is supposed to do. And now let's perform a get request to try to have the hello world. The simplest way to do it is in another terminal, curl, localhost and the port 3000. We hit enter and we have hello world. Now let's create a function that will load data. Because this is a demo, we won't really load data, we will fake it. So what we will do is we will fake a long request, like a network request, a query into database or some data processing that is long to perform. Everything that could delay the response to your clients and to generate cash on those operations, maybe once a minute or once an hour, depending on your needs. We await a new promise. We resolve after two seconds. So we fake that it takes two seconds. Sometimes it's more or less based on what you do. And then we just generate fake data with an array and we return that data. Simple as that. So it could be a network request or the database query that will fetch data and return it. Now in the main endpoint, let's use it. So our function will be async, so we'll be able to wait. We will want to monitor the time that a request take. So start time is date.now. Our data is equal to load data. After doing that process, we get the end time. And the processing time is the end time minus the start time. So we have the duration of that call. 
And now for the response, we will do json.stringify and we will return the data and the time that it took. For a better readability, we can format it using null and two. Let's run our server again to restart it to have the updated code and let's call it. You see it's taking time. It took two seconds and two milliseconds because it's very fast what we did. But the network request took 2000, even if it's a fake network request. And we have our data. Let's say you have a normal project that take two seconds to fetch the data and to return to the client. Every user will have to wait two seconds and maybe it's using resources on a database on a backend for nothing because you could cache it and only do it when necessary. A good solution is to add caching. We will do it with Valky. To use Valky within our Node.js backend project, we will use the package IO Valky. It is just a fork of IO Redis, so it's the same logic. Even in the image, they didn't take the time to rename it to Valky. But on the documentation, it is written correctly. Let's install it, go back to our server, stop it, and install IOValky. On the top of our code, we can import the library with the required IOValky. And to connect to our instance, we need to create a new Valky client with the following information the port, the host, the user, and the password. And this is what you will find on your LSTO admin dashboard. Let's copy the host, paste it here, the port and the user, I prefer them, and then the password. Okay, no worries, I will kill the instance after this video. And now let's use Valky to store data. Now, before loading the data, first we check that we have some cache data with await Valky client dot get and then we need a string to be the key of our cache we use content list but you can name it the way you like and then if we have some cache data what we do is we parse the json from that string because it won't return you a js object but a string and now instead of having the data equal to load data we will check if we have cache data and if we don't or then we will load data. But so far, we never wrote our cache, so we need, when we fetch data, to store it. To do it, before returning the data, we will call Valky client dot set and the same key, we could use a constant variable for better safety. Then, because we said we need to save a string which is with JSON stringify our data, we could stop there, but then the cache would last forever. Even if you restart the server, you would have the cache. What we can do instead, is use the command x, which is the expiration date, and the duration in seconds. So now, when we will write the data, after 10 seconds, the cache will expire and new data will be fetched. Let's save it. And let's try it. Let's open again our terminal and run the server. It's running fine. We can open it wider and call our backend. Let's do it. It's the first time, so it should take the two seconds. It is even more. I don't know why I had a lag, but you can see the benefit of it. And if I run it again, you can see that it lasted only 500 milliseconds, which is quite long. This happens for two reasons. I chose a server in Germany, which is Edsner, and I'm based in Japan. Normally, my backend wouldn't be host on my local device. It would be on the same data center than my Valky instance, which most of the time, because Valky is very fast, you would have responses below 50 milliseconds. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Valky with us. If you want to learn more about how to use Valky with detailed examples, check out our video named What is Redis. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews and to hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. If you want to continue your open source journey, I recommend you watch this video, available here.